Today, we're taking a look at this, the RF Designs TX Mod. In today's video, we're gonna concentrate on this device specifically. We're gonna walk through some of its features and capabilities and just show you what it does and how it works. This is actually my second video on the RF Design series of radios. And in the first one, we took a closer look at the actual modules themselves, talked about the differences between the different versions, as well as explained some of the features and setup. Today, we'll concentrate on the TX Mod and in the next next video, I'll actually show you both of these systems connected up and working and just walk you through some things that you need to know. If you don't know what the RF design series of radios are, they are a set of telemetry radios designed to be used with Ardrapilot, PX4 or any Mavlink based system. They offer long range two way telemetry data in excess of 40 kilometers. And you can also send your control link over that link as well with this TX mod device. And that's what we'll take a look at later on in this video. Just before I jump into it any further, I just want to say if you're interested in getting yourself a set of these radios, please do check out 3DXR in the UK. They are a main dealer for all of the RF Designs equipment, but not only that, they stock a wide range of everything you need to get yourself up and running, including the Cube Autopilot and anything else you need for whether it be a quad or plane. I'll put a link to them in the description and I just want to say a massive thank you to them because we would not have been able to make this content without their support and their continued support helps keep the channel running as well. So taking a closer look at the TX mod itself, as I've already mentioned, it is a long range wireless telemetry module that is designed to go in the back of your radio that allows you to not only send your telemetry, but also transmit your RC link over long range radio as well. It is based on the RFD series of radios from RF Designs and depending on which one you get is compatible with both the 868s or 900s. It actually features one of the RFD modules internally, but it also has built in Wi-Fi allowing you to actually share your telemetry data with a compatible phone, tablet or laptop without any wires. The nice thing about the RF Designs TX mod is that it is a much tidier setup than simply using a telemetry radio on the ground in a little box with a USB cable. You simply take the module itself, plug it into your JR bay, and then you're able to actually configure your radio to send your RC link over PPM to the bay, and then you're fully set up and ready to go. The nice thing about this device is that it also has a built-in configuration wizard via the wireless link as well. And we'll take a look at that in a moment. And that allows you to not only configure the ground station parts, but also configure the telemetry radios on the ear side as well. Very similar to what I showed you on the setup for the individual telemetry radios. Taking a closer look at the module itself, as I've said, it is JR Bay compatible and it is 52 by 66 by 38 millimeters. It is fully Mavlink compatible and has a wide range voltage input of five to 18 volts. And as I've said, it has that built in 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi access point with client mode that allows you to share your telemetry data over TCP or UDP. Depending on the model you choose, it is compatible with either the 868 or 900, and it does have that telemetry module built in, as you can see on the front there from the heatsink. On the top, you'll find dual antennas, which is diversity, or you can configure them individually if you'd like. And then around the bottom, you will find a reset button, and on the back, you simply have the standard input from the JR Bay. The setup for this device is very easy. You simply plug it into your module bay and then you'll need to configure your model to use the external bay for its RC link. Then you can connect to it via Wi-Fi and you will find that an access point is created. And if you search for it on your phone or tablet, you'll be able to connect to it and then you can navigate to the page to allow you to begin the configuration process. Now, I'm going to use my tablet to do this with Wi-Fi. As I've said, it has built-in Wi-Fi access points. So the first thing we need to do is to configure the tablet to actually connect to that access point. I've got the TX mod plugged into the radio, turned on, and I've configured the radio to use the external module. What we're then going to do on the tablet is pull down and go to my Wi-Fi settings, and you should then see the TX mod device show under the list of available wireless access points, and you can simply connect to it. There should be no password needed, and you then should have access to the module. You then have a wireless configuration page. And what you simply do is go to the web address, which is 
4.1 and that is the home page for the module and that should take you to this screen you see here that shows you the web base configuration options for the unit. Now, just something to mention at this point, you will need to configure your telemetry radios to communicate with the TX mod before you can run through the actual configuration wizard. You will need to do that manually, and I'm not going to tell you how to do that in this video because I did explain how to do it in the last one. You may find your radios are pre-configured out the box and they will connect, but if they're not connected, you will need to make sure that you have set them up properly with the IDs correctly to make sure that they will communicate. And whilst I will show you that a little bit in this, I'm not going to do it specifically, but I do show it in that first video when talking through how to set up the actual radios themselves. So on the home screen here, you have all of the options that are available within the module. You have links to all of the documentation. We have the system status, network status, general settings. We have the setup wizard, which we'll walk through in a moment, as well as other information such as the software version, as well as some advanced options for the module as well. If you haven't been able to configure it yet to communicate with your radio, you can do this under the RFD 900 settings. So you can actually open that tab and under here will give you all of the main parameters for the radio module in the TX mod. And the most important part, as I explained in that other video, is making sure that the net IDs, which is S3, are set the same. They should come the same out the box, but you do need to make sure that's the same. And if you are using some additional settings, such as encryption, they will need to be the same as well. However, I have already got mine configured, but as you can see, we have all of the options here. Under this, this will allow you to read in the settings from not only the main module, but if your other module is connected as well, you will see the remote radio parameters come up as mine has here, showing you what you actually need to see for both the remote radio and the main one itself. Returning back to the main screen, as I've said, we have our network status, which just tells us what the situation is with the network settings on the module as well. We have our general settings, which is things like the wireless access point name, the SSID and the IP settings. Again, you shouldn't need to change any of this, but all of this is available on there too. You have the website options at the top, and then we have the first time setup wizard. And this is the best way to configure the module for the first time because it will walk you through all of the stages. So if we hop into that, we can then follow this process through and make sure that we've got everything configured the way we want it to be. However, as I've already mentioned, before you can do this, you do need to make sure that the radios are communicating. So as you can see, I've got a solid green light on that module and I've got a solid green light on there. So on the wizard, we're going to click next. We're going to let it go through and you can see that it's already configured it. It will allow us to set the local remote network ID if we want to change it because out the store or out the factory, they will come preset with the same IDs and all of your radios will come with the same set of IDs. However, it's worth mentioning, everyone else's will be on the same ID as well. So it is strongly advised to set it to your own one. So what I'm gonna do on this one is set the ID to 145, click next, and let that actually configure the IDs for me. You can see, that the LED actually changed and it's reconnected again and it's resetting the IDs automatically. I'm not going to go over this bit too much in this video, but I did explain it as I've said in the first one. And it's important that your own radios have a different ID and especially don't leave them set as they come out the factory. Think of it as a default access code and you should set it to your own individual one once you've set them up. We then have the option of enabling encryption. So whether we want encryption turned on or not, again, there is two levels of the way these radios communicate. You first of all have the ID, which must be the same on both sides and they will talk, but you then have the second option of enabling AES encryption. That means only your radios will communicate even if they're on the same channel as others. So if you wanna turn that on, you can. I'm gonna leave that off for the purpose of this one. You next have the option for PPM pass-through. Now this is the bit that allows you to configure it to send your wireless control link 
over your radio system. So rather than use your existing control link, you're using this one to transmit it. So again, we can enable a PPM pass-through, click next, and then we have the option for the fail-safe settings and all of the other configuration that you would use with it, for instance. So as you can see here, do you wish to set the PPM fail-safe? So yes, record it or no, I'm not using that feature. So I'm going to simply click no, click next, and then PPM failsafe test. And what they're saying here is they're warning you to test what happens just in case it doesn't behave as you expect. So yes, I know my aircraft may crash. And then we have the configuration wizard completed. Now, as I've mentioned, you can also go in and manually reconfigure all of the settings for the radios under the radio configuration page. And this allows you to do all of the same settings that you can do in RFD tools on the desktop as well. And the nice thing is you can configure both the local radio side and the ear side if you want to change the configuration on this as well, including change the channels, change the power output and everything else too. Again, this is all exactly the same configuration as I showed in the first video for the main wireless radio. It's simply for the TX mod. Now that we've got the TX mod configured, I'm just going to show you it actually working with a Cube Autopilot on Ardrapilot. We have our TX mod fully configured. I've connected the telemetry radio to a Cube Autopilot running Ardrapilot. We have our telemetry one port connected. We have our RC in connected and we have our power down here. If I hop over to the desktop, just to show you Mission Planner on the RC screen, you can see that my stick movements that I'm doing now are being replicated on the screen. So what we have is our RC control link from the radio being sent over the RFD radios into the actual autopilot itself. The configuration for this is the same as pretty much any other system. So we have our RC input configured as normal and our telemetry port configured for Mavlink as well. And just to show you the telemetry side of things, we still have the autopilot connected, but I've now got my tablet open with Mission Planner and we're going to connect via UDP. And what we're going to do now is connect onto the local port and that will communicate with the radio, which will then be doing the telemetry via the wireless link to the autopilot. And you can see it's just downloading the parameters. So we'll let it do that. Now that's done, you can see Mission Planner is connected. If I move the autopilot, you can see that is replicated on the screen as well. If I go into setup, we can then go into mandatory hardware, go on radio calibration. And again, you will see the inputs from the radio being replicated on the screen. So we have not only our RC control link being transmitted over the radios, but we then have our telemetry coming back and we can do everything that we would expect to do within Mission Planner on the tablet that I've got here. And the nice thing is it's a nice, simple wireless setup, which means you don't have to mess around with it with all of the cables and everything else. And that is pretty much it from me on this one. Overall, I have to say this is an extremely interesting and capable system with a huge amount of capabilities. This wasn't designed to be a step by step guide, and I will be doing that in the next video where I get it all set up on an aircraft and out and about. More than anything, part one of this video and part two was to walk you through the features and capabilities and explain a few things. And then in part three, we'll take a closer look at what the system actually does on an aircraft point of view and just show you the configuration properly and mission planner and all of those things. If you're looking for a long range wireless control and telemetry link for your aircraft, this system will do the job very well. It isn't designed for smaller aircraft like the likes of Crossfire. However, it is designed to be used with Mission Planner, Ardra Pilot, PX4, and those larger birds that you're looking to get a long range wireless telemetry link on, but also have the RC control link options too. Depending on your setup will depend if you want to use that RC control link. And if you're using a rather bigger bid, you might want to be looking at something with redundancy and have this as your main telemetry with RC backup with a separate control link. That way you've got options to cover you should something go wrong as well. And the real nice thing about it is that it does offer that Wi-Fi functionality and rather have a laptop on a table with cables. You can simply have your tablet with Mission Planner installed and have all of those features and capabilities that you're used to 
having in a much easier and simple platform. Now, as I mentioned at the start, I want to say a massive thank you to Ben at 3DXR. We would not have been able to make this video without their support. Ben holds all of the stock of these radios. He has the Cube Order Pilot and everything. So please do check them out. Please do support them. They're a fantastic dealer and they've been very, very good to us on this channel. And I would not have been able to make this and many other pieces of content without their support. So please do go to their website and have a look if you are interested in getting these radios or anything else for your aircraft build. Anyway, that's it from me on this one. Part three will be out in a few weeks where we take a look at it actually on the setup point of view and then in use. And I'll walk you through all of the individual bits on that one. And then that will be the conclusion of this series as we then move on to taking a look at the other Ardra Pilot ones as well. Finally, I just want to add, if you want to support the channel, please do check out the links in the description to my Patreon as well as buy me a coffee as well. Our Patreon offers multiple levels and it is only with your guys' support am I able to keep the channel running and making content. Alternatively, please do check out buy me a coffee as well if you'd like to support us on a single basis too.